Hi, it's Beth. A couple of years ago, Back to Back celebrated its 20th anniversary, and to do so, we invited people in the states that surround us to join us one evening for an open house and just remember and celebrate some of the things that God had done in the last 20 years, both in their lives and in the lives of the kids that we all love. And one of the people that came that night, she reintroduced herself to me. I had met her 15 years prior when she had come to Mexico as a 13 year old, but she had changed a lot. She told me that she remembered learning about James 1.27 that talks about taking care of orphans and widows in their distress and that she had made a determination in her 13 year old heart. She wanted to give her life to that calling. All these years later, she told me she and her husband now foster medically fragile infants in their county. And she opened up her jacket to, to show me this tiny, impossibly tiny baby that was in a baby carrier. And I gave her this huge hug and I told her I couldn't believe what God was doing in and through her. And then the rest of the night, I kept telling people about her. I was like, I love, I love that God moved so much in her heart all those years ago that today she's giving her life for that calling. I didn't see her for another year. A year later, I saw her and I said to her, oh my gosh, how many babies have you taken care of this year since I last saw you? She said, well, actually, I'm still still caring for the little baby that you saw me with a year ago. In fact, during this year, we put into place some plans to bring her home permanently through adoption. And I said, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. And she said, well, her birth mom has gotten her life back together. And in the last couple of weeks, the county put into place a reunification plan. And she's actually going to go home next week permanently with her mom. And I said, how are you feeling about that? Because that's a complicated story. And she said it. In the beginning, it was kind of hard because I thought this was the mission and anything outside of this mission meant like it wasn't working or some, there was a problem. But she said, the more I went alone to Jesus and talked to him about what I was feeling and what the story was, the more I realized that God actually has the same heart for that baby as he does for that mama. And then if I have God's heart inside of me, that I can have the same heart for that mama that I have for that baby. And I asked him to deposit his heart in me for her. She said, I just started by sending her little text messages and telling her I was praying for her and giving her updates on her daughter. And she recently asked if I would function as the godmother to that baby. And I realized I'm going to be in their life now forever. And I'm gonna have a chance to minister to that mom with the kind of love that God has given me for her. And I was thinking to myself when I heard her tell that story about John 3, 16, about how God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And I was thinking, my gosh, God is such a good lover. He's such a good, so lover of the world that he started a story for a woman in our county in this year, over 15 years ago, when he deposited his heart inside of a 13 year old, knowing it would be cultivated and growing and maturing and ready to go into action on his behalf on this day for that woman. And that's, I mean, the Bible talks about love and there's all kinds of, there's three different kinds of love and they all have very elaborate definitions, but I like the agape kind of love. And in the Greek, part of its definition is that an agape love is compelled to act. It's the kind of love that put Jesus on a cross. And that kind of compelled to act love was deposited into that foster mom and is going out from one of God's kids to someone who's missing from his story. And that that's the kind of love that captures people who don't know what it's like to be in this family. And the only way you get that kind of compelled to act kind of love is you get one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. There's this story in 1 Kings 19 that I have long loved. It's the story of Elisha. I love Elisha, right? Just the chapter before in 1 Kings 18, he calls fire down from heaven on a very wet altar and it still lights up. I mean, this is a passionate, powerful worker of God's kingdom. But in 1 Kings 19, he's tired and I can see why. And he says to the Lord, basically, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I just, I honestly can't hear you right now. Like, what do you want me to do? And the Lord tells him to go to a mouth of a cave and three things pass by, wind, fire, and an earthquake. And the Lord isn't in any of those that passage says, which would be confusing. He's been in fire before, tongues of fire and pillars of fire. He's been in wind before. In fact, the word for wind in Hebrew is the same as the word for spirit. And an earthquake, how many times have we told the Lord, if you just move the earth in front of me, I'll know it's you to move. But he isn't in any of those things. In fact, the Bible says he's in something called a still small voice or a gentle whisper, depending on your translation. And the Hebrew phrase that we get still small voice or gentle whisper from is this funny little Hebrew phrase, kol And kol is used naturally in Hebrew in two ways. Once is like when a woman holds her newborn baby for the very first time and she holds that baby up to her face. She doesn't say like, nice to meet you. I'm going to be your mom forever. Like she pulls that baby to her face and she starts to make noises and, 
and and emit things to that baby that that baby doesn't have any idea you know what it's that what she's saying but she knows exactly what she means that baby starts talking back to her and that exchange between that baby and a mom is called a cold mom to cards it's two people in a position of proximity and intimacy it's also used naturally when two lovers are in bed together and they're exchanging one with another two people in positions of proximity and intimacy that's the cold mom and a cot. And, and the Lord tells Elijah, listen, I'm not in the wind. I'm not in the, the fire. I'm not in the earthquake. I want to meet you in a cold mom and a cot. I want you to get in a position with me of proximity and of intimacy. And in that place, the voice that I speak to you will give you everything you need for the assignments I have. That foster mom found herself in a cold mom and a cot and the Lord gave her more than she needed for that assignment and all the assignments to come. And that is the promise for each of us.